Hello everyone, welcome to our first edition of Your Radio Playhouse. This is entitled WOR Television. It finally came time to do some cleaning of the mysterious boxes in my attic office last week. I literally stumbled upon a box that I didn't remember having. The outside had a few different titles including socks, old clothes, and a weirdly titled Outside Forces. What could be in the Outside Forces box? I opened it up and inside were 15 VCR tapes with nothing indicating the contents of the tapes. I immediately slid the first tape into my VCR DVD combo, and surprisingly, the first visual that appeared was a taped episode of the Morton Downey Jr. show. As I started to stare at the screen, it goes dark and the WWOR Channel 9 logo pops in a grainy white letter. Throughout the evening, I watched and switched, switched and watched. This was a great night for television, 1980s television to be exact. You see, WWOR Television from Secaucus, New Jersey was a hotbed for innovative television from the late 1960s into the early 1990s. By the end, the television schedule included the controversial Martin Downey Jr. show, the Richard Bay show, and the Howard Stern show. Now to bring you the, the roots, Channel 9 signed on the air on a brisk autumn day, October 11th, 1949, as WOR-TV. In the 1950s, the station wanted a family-friendly schedule, and by the 1960s, the ultra-popular romper room arrived and made a big impact on the audience. King Kong and Godzilla movies were shown to adult audiences in the afternoon to the delight of many who wanted variety in their programming. WOR-TV, by the 1970s, featured an all-family-friendly format and were looking for a change. The heads of the company wanted a more adult-oriented format, including a heavy sports schedule. One of the first changes made was the addition of Thames Television from the United Kingdom. The first primetime show featured was The Benny Hill Show, along with Doctor Who, a sci-fi action series. Both shows developed a cult following, and WOR took off. One of the first tapes I placed into the combo threw a booming voice out of the speakers as the picture adjusted. It was an ice cream commercial featuring a man in a white baker's hat and white apron. He was pitching an ice cream animal called Cookie Puss. He carefully announced, For birthdays, holidays, or any day. Cookie Puss looked like an upside down light bulb with enormous eyes. The man, Tom Carvel, started Carvel Ice Cream with $15 he borrowed from his wife. His distinctive voice narrated most of the commercials, and as one person pointed out, he sounded like he had fur on his tongue. The tape rolled onto a partial New York Mets game. It was apparently needed for something. Remember, at the time, you couldn't freeze the action to get a snack and return to the action where you left off. This was a 1980s game versus the Montreal Expos that had Daryl Strawberry at the plate and announcers Ralph Kiner and Tim McCarver giving Strawberry encouragement to hit one out of the park. A special Kiner's Corner featured Keith Hernandez, played after the game. The last cassette of the evening actually started from the beginning of the tape, and it started a talk show block with Morton Downey Jr. and his innovative show by the same name. He featured a huge buffet and a cheating husband at the table. He had to eat the food while the wife threw various pieces of food at him. It was dumb fun television. The bit was cut short by the recorder and two commercials followed. A WOR TV news clip featuring the weather and 7 Eleven Big Gulp commercial. Also, a funny New York Knicks commercial as they hosted World Be Free and the Cleveland Cavs. Free was a point guard for the Cavs in the 1980s, and as research shows, he is alive and well present day. I remember World Be Free in his basketball card that said he had legally changed his name. That was the first time I'd ever heard of a person changing their name. Why would you do that, I wondered. Could I change my name? What would I call myself? Where would I go to do that? Could I just call myself something and it would automatically be my new name? So many questions came with this knowledge. I just wanted to collect the cards. Come to think of it, 
Maybe I can purchase that card again and place it in my scrapbook until I die and my daughter opens it one day, looks through it and says, Dad was weird, and throws it away. The Three Stooges rounded out the tape with a two-hour block of crazy mishaps. This was the first time throughout this entire project that I sat down and watched the entire two hours of Stooges. It was Larry, Moe, and Curly, starring in some very first episodes. I think they were great. I remember as a kid watching these episodes with my dad, who actually watched them when they were original episodes, I think. As the tape ended and faded to black, I didn't want it to end. The time, the smells, the memories. To me, Channel 9 WOR-TV brought me and my dad together when I was a youngster, laughing with him on the couch, and again 30 years later, in an outdated format that we take for granted every day. I immediately recognized that I had to put these treasures on DVD and as digital files on my computer so I did not lose them forever. Sometimes remembering is just as painful as letting things go. By the way, Eastern Microwave Incorporated, based out of Syracuse, New York, started distributing WOR to cable and satellite customers in April 1979, and things were never like the way they were before, just like present day. So if you could change your name, what would you choose? You can send all your information over to electricnotions at gmail.com. Let us know who you are and what you would change your name to, and we'll put it on our online newspaper, the Electric Notions Press. Thank you. Have a great day, guys.